Let me put my slides on. Share screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, thanks. Um, apologies in advance if uh, the connectivity is not really good. I am in rural Scotland uh, in force, so sometimes uh, it can be sketchy. Um, so today I am presenting a business involved in growing mushrooms uh, from uh, wasted resources. Uh, we use agri waste uh, from uh, all sorts of industries, from uh, Costa Coffee to um, brewery grains uh, and uh, hemp. Uh, and uh, we use those mushrooms after we, uh, if they have been growing on those resources to create the plant based foods and products. Um, in my career, as a, um, involved in agriculture uh, since I was a kid because my family in Italy has a farm. Uh, I realized pretty quickly that land use uh, is a very huge problem and this is why I initiated my career into agriculture and uh, land restoration. I understood that uh, um, even with reforestation practices, we won't be capable to cover the actual need that we have to um, cover the gap with the climate challenge. And this is why I got interested into indoor farming, therefore mushrooms uh, in this case. I'm very glad Rob gave us this uh, wonderful presentation before me because it gave, it gave me the opportunity to really make the case around uh, um, land use and intensity of land use. So if we can maximize the impact and uh, the harvest, we can leave the land to rewilding. That's the main case, uh, in my opinion. My uh, background is uh, in the restoration and agriculture, and I became very involved in the climate uh, movement. So years ago, with my business partner, Ian Finley, we founded uh, our sustainability group and uh, giving uh, advisory and uh, sustainability strategy to many companies, we had realized that we needed an example. We needed something concrete to show that this is possible, that uh, climate uh, solution is possible and it's available to everyone. So we started to grow the mushrooms as a sort of toy to bring to the workshops. And we were showing the mushrooms grown on coffee grounds and people were really responding to that and to the fact that actually coffee grounds is a wasted resource that we could actually use for many, many purposes, not just to grow mushrooms and uh, it is happening but very small scale yet, but it is happening. One of, of my other uh, um, hats is about being Climate Key Partner and we work also with the ACCI at the University of Edinburgh through the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. Um, if uh, you don't know the Climate Kick, I urge every innovator or whoever has a, a climate idea to look it up because the Climate Kick offers trainings and mentoring and programs of accelerators to look uh, towards a uh, zero carbon future. And also in forest here, the, we have uh, the Institute of uh, Design and Innovation uh, for the Glasgow School of Art, it's a campus that at the moment, of course, is not operating, but usually um, we lecture there and uh, there is a lot of uh, energy and interest around circular economy and um, how to be sustainable. Um, the project Green Grow became very relevant uh, in many areas uh, of uh, innovation and so we have been awarded a lot uh, by several bodies. Uh, we are still waiting to know the results of uh, the rural awards, which have been postponed to November, if I am correct. And uh, 
one of the things I would like to show is what is the circular economy. So those are the three uh, principles underpinning the circular economy. Keeping products and materials in use, that is what we do in recovering uh, waste and agri-waste materials. And we use them as a, as a substrate. Uh, in while we do that, uh, we regenerate natural systems because those materials are not going uh, into a landfill or uh, in uh, uh, producing carbon emissions. Uh, and then uh, in designing waste uh, out uh, uh, and pollution out of our systems, uh, this is one of the, the other aspects uh, that we are looking into the R&D, because uh, uh, mushrooms could actually re 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 replace plastic or uh, eco-packaging or insulation. So part of the profits we get from uh, uh, the food products are going into this uh, uh, R&D uh, development. And I will show you many, many cases in which uh, this is, has been possible. Um, so going to the uh, process. So uh, we gather our coffee grounds, for instance, or brewery grains, and uh, and then now uh, we inoculate them with spores. We put them in buckets. Also, the buckets uh, are reclaimed from uh, local uh, bakeries. So we uh, use wasted resources again. Uh, from those buckets, uh, mushrooms are uh, popping out when uh, uh, they are uh, um, ready after three weeks of incubation. Uh, they can be reduced depending on the um, spawn available, but uh, generally I would say it's uh, three weeks incubation. Then we have uh, two weeks of harvest. We dry our mushrooms and then we add to these mushrooms uh, other uh, grains to create, uh, which is uh, essentially what we have been looking at, how to have a, a food protein that is available. And the combination between a fiber and a mushroom protein creates a, a protein that is actually fully available and potentially in the future could cover the protein gap, which has been introduced by Rob earlier. Uh, we have a very high protein gap to cover. And so we need to look how to cover this with crops, not just with uh, livestock. Uh, this is uh, the um, mushroom hierarchy pyramid uh, that I um, made, uh, and I think it is quite relevant. So from mushrooms, you can actually um, harvest energy and heat. Uh, we can create uh, uh, chemicals and uh, fuels. It is possible to create uh, bioplastic and polymers. And of course, the highest value goes into food and feed and pharma. Uh, the aspect of pharma is quite relevant because uh, if you look at mushrooms, uh, we are not just looking at edible mushrooms, but we are looking at also at penicillin. So uh, the penicillin, uh, which has been discovered by a Scott, is a fungi. Um, so those are the products that we commercialize and we are about also to release new products, so which are not just uh, ready to cook meals, but also blends covering the protein gap. Um, and they are not just uh, edible mushrooms or gourmet mushrooms, but they are also made of uh, medicinal mushrooms. And those are the health benefits of mushrooms. Essentially, mushrooms have many, many uh, benefits for our body, and they are still investigated to you know how it's possible with mushroom with fungi uh, to tackle viruses, for instance, or to have a bespoke um, vaccine. And there are many, many videos online if you look it up, but one of the most relevant I would recommend is a National Geographic one in which uh, uh, the narrative behind the science uh, for bespoke medicine so is uh, very well explained. Um, those are the materials that uh, are possi uh, possible to be created by mushrooms, and I want to give you some ideas of what is already there. 
uh, those are examples of design or prototypes, but they are still really uh, quirky and uh, giving, I, I believe, uh, a great uh, alternative uh, for uh, a future with zero waste and zero plastic. This is a lamp made by the designer Daniel Troff, and we are actually producing uh, prototypes of lamps uh, in our lab in Forest. Uh, this is a canoe made by Cathy Ayer, so is a Canadian researcher, and uh, this is uh, uh, Cathy actually going over a river. And uh, this is a drone made by Ecovative, which is an American company that is quite successful, and they will open soon also branches in uh, Europe. And this is still Ecovative with a bio packaging for uh, bottles. Uh, this is uh, alternative leather, uh, vegan leather, that was made by Microworks, another American company based in California. Uh, this is Mogul. Uh, again, this is a design company, so they created a, a mushroom textile. And this is another designer who created a mushroom textile with micro microtext. Uh, this is um, my business partner Ian Finley and it is what is possible with geodesic domes because it is actually possible to grow uh, mushroom uh, um, in a way that is hard enough to be used uh, as, a, uh, as a structure. So you can build geodesic domes with it and also landscape them with mycelium because I didn't talk about the byproduct of mushrooms after we grow the mushrooms we are left with mycelium, which is also a soil enhancer. And so we, uh, it's a, a complete cycle, as you see, uh, where nothing is wasted. At the moment, our mycelium goes into a, a local orchard. Uh, but uh, as we plan to increase capacity, and uh, there, there are other mushroom farmers around the UK uh, using the same strategy, this is a great hope for topsoil uh, instead of using uh, the conventional um, uh, the conventional soil and answers like uh, peat. That is not really better to keep it in the ground. So uh, this is something that uh, I am very keen to underline that is very much about uh, waste streams and our policy making can value uh, waste streams in a way that uh, they don't get uh, uh, contaminated because we can harvest uh, the uh, power of these waste but if food waste is not recovered properly actually the degree of contamination is high and they are useless so we need to learn a lot around that um, so, as I said, uh, mycelium bricks can be also composted. So, whatever you produce from mushrooms, from uh, um, insulation to biopackaging, can be in the future, you know, in 10 years, 20 years, uh, possibly even edible for, for marine life. Um, so we could actually time it. This is something, you know, the degradability of the material can be timed depending on which feedstock they have been growing on. So if you grow them on hemp uh, stocks, uh, the material will last longer. If you grow them on uh, coffee grounds, the material will degrade very quickly. So those are the things that we are learning. And in this learning, actually, we uh, have great partners. So one is the Rowett Institute, uh, with the University of Aberdeen. Uh, for the biomaterials, uh, there is a, a great company that works with us also with the training, so that is Glimpse in Belgium. And uh, our vision is to develop a platform where innovators uh, can have access uh, through resources in our, an open source scenario. Uh, and outreach will be higher, of course, because the moment in which uh, the knowledge is shared, uh, innovators so will be able to have recipes and uh, smart uh, uh, farming parameters and these access can boost and uh, uh, give uh, 
a very quick degree of uh, uh, replicability to smart farming. So that's me. Um, I think uh, I covered everything and uh, I'll be delighted to respond to your questions. Thank you so much.